Hey, this is Paul with MakeUseOf.com, and today we're checking out the MSI Creator M16. This is one of the latest laptops sporting the new Intel i7 12700H processor, which compared to last year's model, which came with the 11th gen processor, it should offer about 30% more performance. Being part of MSI's creator series, it has more features that are targeted towards the creators, and that includes video and photo editors, 3D modelers, and other designers too. One of its biggest selling features is gonna be that 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, as well as its highly color accurate panel. Altogether, the MSI M16 offers very good specs, performance, and value, making it not just a great laptop for creators, but also for general productivity and some gaming as well. And as I'll cover with one of its highest configurations, which comes with the RTX 3060, that strikes a good balance between performance for creators as well as some gaming as well. My 1499 review model is one of its mid-range configurations which comes with the i7 12700H and the RTX 3050 Ti 4 GB with 16 GB of RAM. It also has a 512 GB NVMe. Similar to other MSI laptops, depending on your budget and where you buy the laptop from, there are a lot of configurations available. At the time of this review, Amazon appears to be the only place where you can get the MSI Creator M16 with the beefier RTX 3060, but a slightly less powerful i7 12650H. It also comes with 32 GB of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe. That currently retails for $15.99, making it just $100 more than the base model that these usually come in. The MSI M16 comes standard with its 16 inch 16 by 10 QHD plus true color panel with thin bezels that can flip 180 degrees to lay flat. Compared to the traditional 15.6 1920 by 1080 panels, you're getting more screen real estate and a similar footprint. It has an all black design with an MSI dragon on the back. It's rather bland and uncharacteristic, but it's a safe choice considering that this is a laptop that can be used for creators, gamers, business people, and more. Despite being an all plastic build, the laptop is 1.08 inches thick and weighs 4.97 pounds. Build quality overall looks and feels rather okay. Being one of the more budget models in the Creator series from MSI, this is one of the areas that you see some compromise, especially compared to the Z16, for example, that's a little bit more slim and just feels a little bit more premium in hand too. There's no flex, like when you're holding it, like you're not gonna notice any flex there. So it's good in that sense. However, it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet, especially on the lid here. Ever since unboxing this, it was immediately covered in fingerprints. And opening it up, it overall isn't as noticeable, but with more direct lighting like we have right now, it is apparent throughout the panel here. The other benefits though with this larger size is that you do get full-size ports, which are very welcome. You get full-size LAN, full-size USB, and full-size HDMI as well. Additionally, and this is also important and compared to smaller laptops, an area that this actually is a little bit better is with its Cooler Boost 5 technology, which allows for better heat dissipation. So you can actually sustain higher CPU and GPU loads on this laptop before it'll thermal throttle. While there are other similarly spec laptops for about $1,400 to $1,500, if you prioritize additional screen real estate, if you plan on using this on the go a lot and you really need to have a very good panel with you on the go that's color accurate, and gives you that additional height as well for photo or video editing. Anything that basically has a lot of toolbars at the bottom where you would benefit from that extra height. That's the reason why you'd wanna go with a laptop like this compared to another that has similar specs. The MSI M16 does have two slots of memory which are upgradable. Storage is also upgradable, but you only have the one NVMe PCIe Gen 4 slot, meaning it's swappable but not upgradable. And going back to an earlier point, for just $100 more, I think the option from Amazon is the best value right now with the NVIDIA RTX 3060 6 gigabyte model. It has the i7 12650H, which is slightly less than the 12700H, but in practice, you probably won't notice the difference as much compared to the benefits that you would get from that better RTX 3060, which for most tasks is gonna be about 30 to 40% faster, especially in applications and games too, where VRAM is very important, that extra two gigabytes can be very helpful. And so going back to that screen, which they call the golden ratio of the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This was originally introduced with the M16 model from last year, and MSI has been adopting it into some of their newer laptops too. The display's width is the same as a traditional 15 by six display, but it's 0.4 inches taller, which gives you about 11% more screen in a very similar form factor because of these thin bezels. That also still manages to has a 720p webcam at the top. One of the other selling features, of course, is that true color technology, which is 100% RGB. Hence, each color is delivered to the highest standard precision in detail, guaranteeing excellent color fidelity for many uses and applications. 
That's from MSI's website. If you're someone who needs to have a varied color display or you need to work with someone else collaborating on the same project and need to make sure whatever colors you're seeing are the same that they're seeing, that's where a display like this is gonna become very clutch. There are six profile presets that you can choose between depending on the type of work you're doing or the content that you're watching or the games that you're playing. And circling back to another point, compared to other laptops with similar specs, whether that's from MSI or other brands, many of those are gaming laptops and they tend to have faster refresh rate screens, 120, 144 or higher refresh rate screens. If you're gaming on the go, you're gonna appreciate that, but it also makes the laptop overall feel more fluid, especially with web browsing and other tasks like that where there's a lot of motion. This is stuck to just 60 Hertz. It's not bad, but coming from my MacBook Pro with ProMotion, it is something I do miss. But again, the trade-off or the benefit rather that you get with this is the color accurate display as well as that 16 by 10 taller screen. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run a few and you can compare the results that I got here with other benchmarks that are available online. At the time of the review, I only had this laptop, the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M1 Max, as well as my previous gaming laptop, which is the Asus Rogue G14, which comes with the Ryzen 4900HS. So no way are these laptops apples to apples comparisons, especially with price, form factor, and generations. But overall, it should help you actually appreciate the performance and value that the new 12th gen Intels offer this year. With my first test with Cinebench R23, you get some interesting results as well as some very impressive ones compared to the M1 Max. Plugged in with its multi-score, it gets 14,657. The MacBook gets 12,354. The Asus gets 7,315. The M16 single score is 1,814. The MacBook Pro is 1,532. And the Asus Rogue G14 is 1,097. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. Unplugged, there's a significant performance drop on this laptop. And even when configuring different profiles and setting it to max performance with all its different settings, I was unable to unlock its full performance on battery mode. The MacBook we know doesn't have that issue, but surprisingly, the Asus Rogue didn't have that issue either. With the M16, its multi-score drops to 8,699. The MacBook actually gains a point and goes 12,365. And the Asus Rogue G14 is also within the margin of error. It goes to 7,134. So this new Intel i7-12700H is very powerful. Just with Cinebench, it actually gets better results than the M1 Max, which is about 18.6% faster with its multi-core plugged in. And it's also about 100% faster than the 4900HS. But again, once you unplug it, it drops its performance by about 32%. Firestrike and Tie Spy are only available on Windows, so I was only able to compare the two Windows laptops. The M16 with a 3050Ti trades blows with the older Rogue with the 2060, but when it comes to the CPU scores, it handily still beats it. But these tests do highlight the importance of the extra two gigabytes of RAM, despite the fact that the RTX 2060 is older than the 3050 Ti. It's overall a beefier card and it does have the additional two gigabytes of VRAM, which do help it with some of these scores. And so again, while this isn't intended to be a gaming laptop, there's no doubt in my mind that a lot of people who are getting this are probably students or other creative professionals who might want to do some gaming as well. For more casual games, and I'm not even saying very basic ones, you could do Overwatch, you could do League, easy on this. You could crank up the settings and being that this is only a 60 hertz panel, you're not gonna really need anything more than 60 frames per second. This can handle it soundly. But again, if you really wanna get the most out of this, I do recommend, again, spending the extra $100, get the 3060. That way, if you do plan on gaming, if you wanna plug this into an external monitor and then push out those extra frames per second, that's gonna be the best choice. Overall, my user experience with this has been pretty good. I'm really appreciating the bright, vibrant, very color accurate panel with that 16 by 10 aspect ratio. An area though I would have really liked to see this improve on was with its design. It does feel a little bit cheap at times. Again, the build quality is good, but it's all plastic and it doesn't feel premium. And when it comes to taking this on the go, at almost five pounds, it is pretty noticeable. It's definitely not a light or small laptop. Battery life is also mediocre. With mixed use, you can probably average between three to four hours with lighter tasks at about 50% brightness. Gaming and of course other GPU intensive tasks, that's gonna drop this well below an hour very quickly. So I wouldn't recommend that. Like if you're a student or some other professional who needs to be unplugged for a long period of time, it'll get you by, but there's a good chance that you'll also need to take that power brick with you, which is a little bit unfortunate. Of course, now coming from the M1 MacBook, I've become a little bit spoiled there. Another area where, you know, I miss 
some of the attributes or characteristics of that M1 Mac is with its quieter fan speeds overall. And even with editing and exporting videos, it hardly kicks in unless it's a very, very intensive timeline. This on the other hand, on anything but its quiet profile, the fans will kick in relatively quickly and it does get relatively loud. So this would be an example of the laptop just running without really anything in the background except, you know, a couple tabs here. And we can even close those out right now. What is eating up my arm memory? Not very much. So it like, takes a second for the fan to quiet down a little bit. So keeping everything in smart priority, as they call it. In your MSI Center, that's where you have a couple other options here. They recommend keeping it in Smart Auto, where it's going to auto change the fan speed, the CPU speed, based on the apps that are running, which should in turn give you the most performance when you need it, and then keep the computer running a little bit more quietly and a little bit more efficiently when you don't need all that extra performance. It does have its new AI Sense built into its MSI Control Center which does help a little bit. But that said, I mean, it can only do so much, especially once you're doing something with Photoshop, Premiere Pro, or Cinebench, anything that's gonna actually require GPU to work, the fans are gonna kick on pretty loud. The benefit, on the other hand, I mean, obviously it's keeping the temperatures cool, so you're not throttling in that sense. But if you're using this without headphones and you're trying to do those tasks, like if you're video editing and you need to hear what you're doing, I definitely would recommend using headphones. The keyboard does have a white backlight that has three levels of brightness and the keys themselves have about 1.5 millimeter of key travel. It's good and easy to type with, but nothing to write home about. I'm sure some people will also appreciate having the numpad on the right hand side. I think it's a little bit interesting how the power button is also above that numpad there. Being that you have this larger space at the bottom here, I would have imagined having a larger trackpad and of course coming from the MacBook. You know, you're spoiled there, so you can't really compare that all the time. I do like having the fingerprint reader built into it so you can log into Windows a lot faster. And of course, going back to the ports, having three full USB ports plus the one fast USB-C and HDMI is also good. So overall, I think this laptop stands out because of a couple things. It's screen, it's big, it's color accurate, and at its core, it offers a lot of good value even compared to gaming laptops with similar specs. If you're willing to have that trade-off of the 60 Hertz in place of having a larger screen and you get that 3060 model if your budget allows for it i think that's a very good choice and again compared to other options out there for a 12th gen processor it's one of the best choices so thanks again for checking out this video if you have any questions about this laptop you want to learn a little bit more about it feel free to let us know in the comments down below and we'll try to help you out there this has been paul with make use of and until the next one catch you later